could probably do that for a half an hour listing how many of you are blank fans of his work. Because he's done so many really cool things, especially in the genre. Uh, help me welcome you to the stage. Ron, come on up, man. Film, yeah, correct? My first film, period. It's my first 
experience with film at all. I had never, I've never done any, any even any real television when I was coming up. Um, so it was a transformational. Trip. It took place in 1980. It took a year to film. Um, it was uh, um, victimized by an actor's strike, which made it revert to being a Canadian production so that we could actually film it. Because originally it was an American production. When, when the actors struck, Americans, actors couldn't work. So, um, of course, by the time we started filming, the, the, the strike was settled, but it remained a Canadian production and was eligible for these awards. So, uh, you know, I thought it was going to the Oscars, but really. Yeah, <laughs> hey, welcome to Kennedy. <laughs> oh, you have one of these two. <laughs> but yeah, we worked up in. Um, Oh, and sound? <laughs> There's some real caves up there, actually, it turns out. Since we was doing a caveman movie. That must have been a bit of a grueling shoot, though. It was brutal, man. You know? Brutal. I still have goosebumps. It was cold. <laughs> we were naked. Every time you say naked, you know, there's, uh, there's not a lot of times I'm speechless. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is going sideways here. It's, it's not waiting money to pay for the sideways. Maybe it's going full frontal ways. I'm not sure. This could be what we all came for. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I read a quote from you recently. You're not expecting to get serious now, do you? <laughs> I was trying to switch gears, but we'll see how it goes. I read a quote from you that said, I've always felt there are aspects of me that were monstrous. And I'm wondering what those aspects are and how they've informed your career. <laughs> Anybody in this room? I said monstrous, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's get back to the naked question. Um, it's actually sometimes one of the same, but come on. But, um, has anybody in this room ever heard of the term low self-esteem? Well, I had that when I was a little kid. Um, and you just feel like, you know, two left shoes. And then, you, know, you feel like the world is a tuxedo and you're a pair of brown shoes. There's a lot of shoe alliteration too much going here. But, um, you know, you, 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 you feel, uh, even though you're wrong, you know, even though everything that you're thinking is a distortion of reality and has nothing to do with reality, it, it, it's happening in your head, so it's very real. And, um, you know, there's the monster. There's like this, like, this is why no one loves me, this is why I'm, I'm you know, never going to fit in as well, you know. And that's the metaphoric monster that I was referring to. And um, anybody who's ever had any self-doubt, anybody who's ever been um, um, twisting in the wind when everybody else is going in a certain direction, anybody who's ever, you know, been, felt like, you know, I, I just don't fit in, knows um, the feeling that I was trying to describe with that word monster. And so I, I, I um, the meeting of Guillermo del Toro um, was, um, without exaggeration, you know, I, I regard that as a religious experience because um, Guillermo's whole obsession as a storyteller is the examination of monsters and how that is the most human um, sort of, um, like the monsters in, in Guillermo's movies are more human than the humans. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Um, and so when I met him, I became part of his, his paint box, you know, and he used it over and over again. Um, the Hellboy was metaphorically um, uh, 
the hunchback of Notre Dame, he was somebody that you know couldn't live in the world because he was too different and too strange, and yet he had more human qualities to aspire to. Than, you know, you could you could list. So that's what that all meant. And I, I'm sorry if I if I went from nakedness to being a downer. <laughs> I try not to let it happen too often. Is there a um, character that you played in your career that you feel most represents who you are? Well, there's a lot of them. Um, um, and, you know, there's a lot of different kind of looks at it. Um, uh, I mean, probably, well, the, the first three jobs I had, three prominent jobs I had, um, that, that reached a, a wide sweep of audience because they were movies, not the theater, were um, Quest of Fire, um, and Name of the Rose, and Beauty and the Beast. In all three of those, I was completely covered up. I was, I was a, the creation of Rick Baker. Um, two out of three of those times. Um, and I was basically just providing the human behavior inside this, this kind of abstract, made-up figure. Um, but it seemed as though I was building up to something, because by the time I reached Vincent from Beauty and the Beast, that was probably most reflective of what I'm trying to describe to you in that last answer, uh, of somebody who, um, because of how unacceptable he looks, in the real world, and because of how much he longs to just be normal and, and his, his love of humanity to, 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 <coughs> to do everything that he can to, to, to share in the real world, he becomes this tragic figure. And um, there's been many since, but that probably was the most personal um, character I could play. Let's talk a little bit more about working with uh, Del Toro. You know, he's uh, like a fantasist. Uh, he lives in that world of fantasy. And you guys have obviously clicked, and I've read that it was something that was a big deal. Tell us a little bit about your working relationship and why he's such a good parent for you as an actor. He, I don't, you know, I, 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 I all I know is he's given me the greatest roles that I've ever had the good fortune to play. I mean, really, really colorful, great roles. I mean, most recently, specific women, you know. He's the only director on the planet that would have thought to give that role to me, you know. He's the only director on the planet that would have thought to give that role to me. Um, and it, it just, he sees, he sees things that, that no one else sees. Plus he has, you know, the power of a checkbook. <laughs> he can actually hire people. And so, you know, I, I, I owe him um, more than I could ever express because those roles that he's given me were career defining and, um, you know, life altering. Uh, but yeah, he just, he has a sensibility about what what exists inside of him that he wants to see come out in his characters that he, that he writes that um, is unique and uh, no one else in the world. Like the closest is Jean Jacques Renaud. I did three movies for him. And he sees me also in a very specific way, different from the camera. But um, those are those are roles that are easy to play because he, he's tapping into something that. That exists that very few other people have ever really seen. A lot of people see me as a, just a bad guy, you know, just a badass, like one dimensional, you know, big, tough, whatever. But there's always this kind of warm, soft center in um, Jean Jacques and Jamal's version of the world. It also explains um, somewhat your character in Sons of Anarchy. He's, he's one of the great areas with him. And I'm wondering, 
if you had to have done this work with Del Toro, you know, do you think you would have landed that role on Sons of Anarchy? Or do you think that you kind of had to work up to that persona in some way? Yeah, I, I think I think Hellboy 2 was the reason I'm in the Sons of Anarchy. In fact, I'm convinced of it. Now, did they approach you for this character? Did you have to um, go in for an audition for Sons? For Sons, yes. Yeah, they, they approached me. And uh, um, it all worked out. <laughs> it, it didn't hurt that, um, that Hellboy 2 was just about to open. And Hellboy 2 was the first movie that came with Del Toro made after Parents Labyrinth. So it didn't hurt that I was, you know, playing a prominent role in. Um, the next film after, you know, that, that, that had, um, that had uh, anointed Guillermo as the most important filmmaker in the world. That, that helped a lot. <laughs> I recommend it for any of you who have worked with, work with, work with somebody who just made past life work. Um, I think the question that's on a lot of people's minds here, is there going to be a Hellboy 3 or is that more internet speculation? It's on everybody's mind, including mine. Um, I've said this a million times, you know, I, I, every time I'm with Guillermo, I talk about how we're obligated to finish this trilogy. And then he tells me about all the reasons why that's probably never going to happen. But uh, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep the conversation going. And I really feel as though um, we're obligated to you guys to, to uh, for hanging in there for two movies and getting pregnant with you know, the arrival of this, this entity that has this predetermined destiny. And we have to see whether he's able to break through the, the curse, the oracle, by sheer will, or whether he is destined to destroy the world, which is what he was brought to the earth to do. That's the internal struggle of Hellboy. It's like good against evil. You know, he's been, he's been brought for evil, but he's been nurtured for good. And so it's nurture or nature. So that's the contestant. And, you know, the third, the third movie would, would be epic. It would be, it would be, if there's any children in the room, please don't listen. <laughs> that ass motherfucker. You heard me, you? you gotta put his mask back now. Everything said in this room today stays in this room. Yeah. What happens in Edmonton? <laughs> Alright, um, Hellboy, Hellboy character is one of the most intensive characters in terms of makeup and prosthetics. Tell us about the process of getting into that. How long does it take for you to transform into Hellboy? Well, we got it down to uh, four hours. Um, the first time I was ever made up as, as Hellboy, uh, it took uh, 11, 11 hours. Oh. And it looked like, this is really going to be a drag. <laughs> four hours is annoying, but um, it's doable. Um, the, uh, the best and the brightest people in the business worked to turn this into that. And um, so I was surrounded by people who I adored, I admired, I loved being in the company of. So don't feel bad for me, I had a great time. And um, I was aware every minute of it that there were an awful lot of people in the world that wished they were me. So I have no complaints about the um, process. It was, it was worth it to bring, to bring that character to life was worth whatever we had to go through.